Yeah. <laughs> Woo, yeah, I'm from New York City, everybody. Uh, we, we all know that New York City is the melting pot, right? Uh, my family melted here from Haiti. I'm very proud to be Haitian. I'm very proud to be Haitian. The only thing I don't like is when I tell folks that I'm Haitian, I get a weird reaction, because I guess I don't look Haitian to most people. Like, sometimes I feel when I tell folks, they don't even care. Like, sometimes white people, they can make me feel really uncomfortable because they have, like, this stare, like, in the back of the mind, in their minds, they're saying, oh my God, I didn't know they made other versions of you people. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. A lot of times I get, you don't look Haitian enough. And I'm like, what is that supposed to mean, you don't look Haitian enough? Like, am I supposed to land some rubble for a few days and then come back out like, ah, here I am? <laughs> Do I qualify now? Is there enough third world struggle on my face? The worst response I ever got, I was talking to this girl, you know, making a small talk, asking each other, oh, where are your folks from, you know? And I'm like, well, my family's actually from Haiti. She was like, damn, you Haitian? Like, why Clef earthquake Haitian? I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? So you're just gonna associate me with tragedy off the jump. That's how we're gonna start this conversation? She started apologizing because she knew she was in the wrong. She was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean the earthquake comment. I'm like, no, why you gotta compare me to Wyclef? He is ugly as hell. I can't get a better looking Haitian. You can't upgrade me. I can't get a Lenny Cravitation. What's up? Everybody's like, oh my God, I had no idea Lenny Kravitz was Haitian. And here's the thing, people, here's the thing. He's not Haitian, but if he was, that'd be a good example to have. It's way better than white club Haitian any day of the week, people. I'm a little vain, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have aspirations. Besides sexy, I wanna be like GQ sexy. You know what GQ sexy is? GQ sexy is when you get to take pictures with your eyes closed, looking down at your chest like this. Just, just have that freedom, that confidence. You can't do that when you're ugly. When you're ugly, all your faces are like this in the photos. This is the only face you can make right here. It's like, didn't we tell you not to smile? I'm not smiling. It's, I didn't do nothing. Uh, guys, even though I look adorable, uh, I'm broke as hell. Uh, I took, a, took the train to come here. <laughs> I love the trains out here, man. The trains in California, you guys have clean, efficient, powerful trains, great trains. Compared to the ones in New York, I hate the trains in New York. Everybody's always like, oh my God, I love New York because you can take the train. Here's the only thing, New York just has trains that run more frequent and there's just a bunch of them. But it doesn't mean that it's better, okay? I live in New York City and it takes me three hours to get home. Does that sound fair? There's people who live in other states that get home before I do. <laughs> it's a terrible way to live, people. The train is always breaking down, it's always getting stuck, and they always have to make an announcement. You know, some guy speaks over the intercom to try and smooth things over with the people. They're like, please be patient, we're experiencing train traffic, but thank you for riding the MTA, we're working very hard right now. Or, please be patient, we're experiencing signal derailment, but thank you guys for being patient and riding the MTA. And here's my favorite. Please be patient, somebody committed suicide and it's gonna take six hours to clean it up. <laughs> Thank you for riding the MTA. They don't really say that, but that's how, <laughs> that's how it feels when they say an accident has happened, you know? But look, I'm not trying to sound like I'm insensitive, okay? Look, the first few accidents, I was very distraught. I showed a lot of emotion. I'm like, damn, why would somebody jump off a platform? That is a crazy way to go out. Who would do something like that? That was the first few suicides. But by suicide number 37, I was kind of out of tolerance. I'm like, yo, this is like the third time this week. Come on, man. You really gonna kill yourself during rush hour? That is just selfish and inconsiderate. Why couldn't you do this at 5 a.m. when nobody was out by the train tracks? That makes no sense to me. I mean, I'm not trying to suicide shame anybody, okay? Just, but just, <laughs> just be more respectful to the hardworking citizens of New York City. That's, I started noticing how uh, my attitude would change, uh, you know, because I was getting stuck and, you know, you just start to think of all these negative thoughts. And I started, like, thinking about blaming myself for things that it had nothing to do with being stuck on the train. I was like, you know what? I shouldn't have slept with that fat girl. That's why the train got stuck. That's what happened for being a good wingman. That's what happens when you're a good wingman. <laughs> but I needed a ride home. I needed a ride home. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Yeah, but then uh, I, honestly, guys, what I would do, I would, uh, usually I'm the type of person, if I see like a, a woman with children, I'll help her with her stroller, you know what I mean? Or, or um, I'll help somebody with bags, or I used to give her my seat. 
I stopped, I stopped giving away my seat. I cut that off. I'm like, you know what? Forget everybody. I work hard too. I'm sitting down. I'm chilling. I don't care if you're pregnant, okay? Okay, if you're handicapped, I don't care if you're pregnant and handicapped, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Old folks, I cut y'all off too, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't discriminate. <laughs> but riding the train uh, did teach me one lesson. I learned that I had to value and prioritize the right things in life, those things I didn't have. I didn't have that balance. Uh, I was at a party getting drunk, really t uh, messed up one time. I was getting drunk, having a great time. Everybody at the party has Uber money or <laughs> this thing at a nice hotel nearby. And I'm like, dang, I gotta go get back on the train, drunk. <laughs> and when I'm riding, the when I'm drunk, I'm just belligerent. I'm like, oh, oh, all right, Nick, woo. You gonna be all right, Nick. This is what we gonna do, this is what we gonna do, Nick. We gonna make it home in one piece, baby. We gonna make it home in one piece, baby. We gonna stand close to the wall so we don't fall into the train tracks. <laughs> so we don't end up in an accident, you know. <laughs> just stay close to the wall and you gonna be all right. And guys, I had this lapse where my, like, my eyes closed for like three seconds. I don't know what happened, and I fell into the train tracks. My own worst fear happened. I fell into the train tracks. But my first thoughts were not like, oh my God, am I alive? My, or is the train coming? My first thought was, oh my God, I hope my cell phone is okay, because I just, <laughs> I just got an upgrade. I cannot afford a new phone. My phone was okay, guys, my phone was okay, but my hip was not, my hip was messed up. And I didn't sign up for Obamacare, so I had an expensive hospital bill. Yeah. Yeah, man, growing up was uh, interesting. I had patient parents. Um, they were aware of American tradition, but they didn't necessarily follow it. Uh, my mom, uh, she ruined the tooth fairy for me. I didn't get to enjoy the tooth fairy. All right, you know how you lose a tooth, you put it under the pillow. Beautiful thing, you wake up in the morning to some money, right? Not how it quite happened in my household. My mom would kick in the door at one in the morning, like, Poof, here's five dollars. Like, what? <laughs> Where's the tooth fairy? Look, that heifer ain't coming. You want the five dollars or not? You cutting into my cigarette money, boy. So, all right, I take the five dollars. Good. No losing any more baby teeth before next Friday. That's petty, all right? Hey, that's my time. I've been Nick Alexander. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>